Thank you for having me. Before I start, I just want to talk about a little story. A few weeks ago, I was really unsure about what I was going to do. Have you ever been unsure in your business or in your relationship, like struggling, not really sure, should you make this decision or that decision? That's what was going on with me. I had written a book and I wanted to release it, but I wasn't sure if the edits were right. I wasn't sure if it was quite time. And luckily, I had somebody that helped me make that decision that changed everything for me and moved me from being unsure into being really motivated. Because that's what we want in our businesses and our relationships, yes? We want to be motivated. We want to be inspired. We want to feel like what we're doing is making a difference. We want to have the connection and the feeling of really knowing that we are worthwhile and we're valuable. And what's really great is we can make this happen for us at any moment in time. We can change our emotions in the moment to create a new reality. And in fact, this happened for me just the other day. I had class, but I knew I had to get a bunch of stuff done and I was overwhelmed by everything I had to get done. So I was sitting there like, okay, let's do this. Let's make this work. And I started checking things off my list, getting a bunch of things done. So much so actually, I almost was hoping class wouldn't start. So that way I could keep doing all the things I needed to do, right? So this is what I want to talk to you about today is how do you shift your mind? How do you shift your emotions to create a new reality right away in the moment? Because it is possible. So how many of you have heard of the subconscious or the unconscious mind? Good. Yes. Yeah. So this is the part of you that makes all the decisions and drives you when you're not paying attention. This is the part of you that decides what your body is doing, how you're digesting, what you're thinking, what you're feeling. This is the part of you that drives to the grocery store when you don't know that you're driving and you get there and you don't remember how you got there. Have you all had that experience, right? Like, oh, good, I'm glad something drove me to the grocery store. That's your unconscious or your subconscious mind. But it's also the part of you that drives home when you're not paying attention, when you meant to go to the grocery store. And this is the same thing that happens in our relationships and in our business. When we think we're going one direction and we end up going another. Let me talk a little bit about how this happens. Now, our mind doesn't know the difference between past, present, and future, right? Think about it. You can get worried about something in the future. Like you make up stories about it. What if this happens? What if that happens? Or if you're going on vacation, you get really excited about it and you get like, oh, my vacation's coming up next week. I'm so excited I get off work. And you can feel it in your body as if it's happening now. And same thing in the past. We can get angry again, or we can start worrying again at so about something that's already happened. Or we can remember a memory with fondness and with love. So what we want to do then is make sure that whatever we are accessing in the moment is what we actually want our brain to be pointed at. Most of the things that we learn, we learn before the age of seven. Imagine this, like our, we're in this magical wonderland as children. And our brain waves are the same as people get in hypnosis. So when they say kids are little sponges, this is literally what's happening. We're just absorbing everything around us. We are absorb absorbing what our parents think, how they act. We absorb everything from school, from religion, from our culture, from the media, everything we're absorbing and we're making decisions about what's happening based upon how we're feeling at the moment. Did you know right now they're saying that we get about 12 million bits of information per second? 12 million. We can process 128. 12 million, 128. <laughs> like, what does the brain do with all that stuff in between? And this is where we delete and we distort and we generalize information so we can process the world around us. So now, what are you deleting, distorting, and generalizing? And how is that impacting how you're interacting with people? Let me give you an example. Imagine you're four. 
and you draw this amazing picture and you're so excited about it and you grab your picture and you go running to your mom and she's in the kitchen cooking dinner and you're like mommy mommy look at my picture it's so great and your mom's like really busy cooking dinner and she says not now honey like go back keep playing i'll look at it later now sometimes as children we're like oh, okay mom's busy and we just run back to our room and no big deal but sometimes in other moments we go oh I knew my picture wasn't good enough. I knew that mommy didn't love me. And our unconscious mind makes this belief. And that memory can be actually what drives us forward and what our brain references in everything we do from then on. So it's very interesting that the very thing we think drives us isn't often the thing that drives us. Let me give you an example. When I work with people, They'll come in, let's say, for procrastination in their business. I'm procrastinating. And I say, okay, you're procrastinating. Everybody does, right? Everybody in this room. <laughs> Is there anyone that hasn't procrastinated? Yeah. So I say, okay, so what's the problem with your procrastination? They say, well, when I don't procrastinate, I don't get my work done. Okay. What's the problem with not getting your work done? Well, when I don't get my work done, I don't get clients. Okay. That's valid. What's the problem with that? Well, if I don't get clients, I don't make money. Okay. So what's the problem with that? Well, if I don't make money, I can't support my family. Okay, well, what's the problem with that? Well, if I can't support my family, that means I'm worthless. I'm not good enough as a father, as a mother, as a wife. And all of a sudden, their brain is accessing that picture from when they were four. And those two memories are linked. So when we find ourselves procrastinating, self-sabotaging, feeling unsure, or reacting in a way in our relationships that we don't want to react anymore, like having moments where we get snappy when we don't want to get snappy, or getting frustrated over something that we know or think we shouldn't be getting frustrated about, that's because that unconscious subconscious mind is accessing something super old and has decided that this is the way that we stay safe. Because that's the job of our unconscious mind. It stores memories, it brings memories up for resolution, and it helps us decide what memories to look at in order to make decisions now. So when we change our mind or change what our mind is looking at by changing our emotion or changing our, our spaciousness of what it is that we're thinking or feeling in that moment, we can actually shift this permanently for ourselves. So what we believe creates an attitude, creates a behavior, creates a result, which reinforces our attitude. And we see this all the time in school. So let's say you're in second grade, you're learning how to spell, you're learning how to read, and you see all the kids around you doing pretty well, you know, and you feel like, ooh, this is a little bit of a struggle for me. You hear all the other kids are succeeding and you see them reading, but for whatever reason, your teacher isn't teaching you in the way that you need to be taught to. Not because they're a bad teacher, but just because your styles don't vibe. And that's okay. Or maybe they're a bad teacher. Some of us have had those as well. But now we create this belief that we're not good at reading or we're not good at spelling. And what kind of attitude do you think we're going to bring to school when it's time to read or read out loud? Which creates the behavior of avoiding reading, avoiding doing our homework, avoiding spelling, which then of course creates a result of not getting good grades or actually not becoming good at reading, which then reinforces that belief that I'm not good at reading. And now we run that cycle for the rest of our lives until something comes in to change that belief, until we learn something new, until we create something for ourselves otherwise. So are you ready to feel how you can do this right now in the moment? to hear how you can change your emotion and your belief right now to change your reality and see a new landscape for yourself. How many of you want to do that? Give me a nod, give me a hand. Yes, good. That's what we're going to do right now. So I want you to remember a time when you're procrastinating. This can be a time a couple weeks ago. It can be a time a couple of months ago. Does everyone have a time? Give me a nod or a thumbs up when you've got the time. Yes? Yes, okay. So I want you to create a picture of that time. So go ahead and close your eyes. 
Imagine a picture of that time, and I want you to put your hand wherever you, wherever you see that picture, whatever you have that picture. So it may be in front of you, it may be to the side of you, but actually put your hand there right now. Where is that image of that time you're procrastinating? Perfect. Put your hand there. Good. Now feel it. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you feeling in that picture? Now what I want you to do is with purpose and intention and breath, I want you to push it towards me. So push it towards me. I'm gonna take all of these pictures, we're gonna put them in a giant pile. Push it, push it, push it. Lots of intention, lots of purpose, good. I'm grabbing all the pictures, see it. See it going away from you, feel it going away from you. Hear it as I take it away. And we're gonna keep pushing it all together. Push this pile of pictures way out in the sun. Ready? Push it, push it, push it, push it, push it. Breathe into it, see it go away, see it burn up in the sun. Is it gone? Good. Take a breath. Celebrate. Good job. All right. Yes. Now, close your eyes again. Imagine the best version of yourself or your superhero or the mentor, the person that has inspired you, that has motivated you, that has excited you the most in your whole entire life. Not if you have that picture. Good. Reach out and grab that picture. Physically reach out and grab it. And I want you with breath and intention to pull it in and replace that old picture. Put your hand back in that spot where that old picture was. Put it there and make the colors more vibrant. Make the feelings feel even better. Feel the motivation, the excitement, the support, the love. Make it perfect for you, the sights, the sounds, whatever you need to make that picture perfect of that superhero and lock it into place. Got it? Good. Drop your hands. Open your eyes. What's changed? How many of you are noticing a little more lightness or motivation? How many of you? Yes. Good. And when you think about that old picture procrastination, has that changed? Yeah, it's that easy. This actually is pointing your brain at a different spot, at a different memory. Instead of running away from that time that you didn't do so well, which is what we tend to do as humans, right? We run away from poverty, we run away from getting yelled at, we run away from whatever. And what happens when we run away from something and we're not looking where we're going? We run into the wall, okay? So now what you've just done is you've turned from running from that procrastination and you've turned and looked at your best version of yourself, your superhero, your mentor. And now you're focused to the future, which opens up all your possibilities and everything's in front of you. You can do this at any moment in time. Teach it to your kids, teach it to your coworkers. When we're done, I have sheets on how to do this so you can take it home and remember and share it. Before I go, I wanna finish those stories for you. That time two weeks ago when I talked about, or a couple weeks ago when I talked about how motivated I was before class and I was checking everything off my boxes in my list, I'd woken up that day overwhelmed, not wanting to do anything, knowing I had class after a series of 13 hour days of knowing I had board exams coming up, I did this practice and it shifted everything. In fact, I connected with some clients and closed some business before class that day. It was super motivating and really exciting. And that time I was talking about with my book where I wasn't sure if I should release it or not, I decided to release it. I got excited, I made the change and it actually became a number one Amazon bestseller that day. It was amazing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So you can all do this. It's within your grasp. It's within your reach. So thank you for listening. Have a lovely day.